This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. I just wanted to do a video and cover some of these board games that are sold to children that are geared towards toddlers because these things are a gateway into magic and the occult. A lot of these games have already been discussed. Obviously, we all know that the Ouija board is satanic, that it brings demons into your home, and it should be forbidden inside of your home. But what a lot of people don't know is that magic that you see with magicians, you know, these lame magicians who pull a rabbit out of their hat or a rabbit out of their rear end, these dorks who perform as magicians, these guys target young kids because it's a gateway for them to get into magic and the occult. They're not Kids aren't going to start off and go, hey, you guys want to sacrifice an animal today? Obviously, they're going to need to see this stuff. And then as what they do, it's almost like a gigantic pyramid scheme. They see a little bit of magic work. Then they realize that there's other things like Dungeons and Dragons, right? And they see more magic and more spells in that. And they realize that there's more, there's levels that you can grow within learning magic and performing magic. And that's how it works. Nobody's just going to wake up at four years old and say, hey, I want to perform a black magic uh, ritual mass and drink some human blood and kill some animals. It's not how it works. Everything is mind control. So they, they very carefully do this and target kids. And if you go on to ToysRUs.com, now I know more people are probably likely to go to Walmart maybe these days or Target. Although I'm not really sure where parents shop with uh, you know Toys R Us being as big as it used to be when I was young. But if you go there and you click on games under their menu, they actually even have an area. They have board games, party games, card games, and they have uh, they have an o- their own drop down menu for magic, magic tricks, and magic sets. Parents don't realize the dangers of this stuff. They just think, what's the big deal, right? They're going to get, you know, a a small little wand and they're going to, you know, get some cards and learn how to do card tricks. I understand that. Okay. I understand from that perspective, it's not a big deal, but it's a gateway into getting them interested in these things. Now, I don't know about any of you growing up, There was only maybe a few kids in my school who were into magic. I'm not talking about the Satanists or the Gothic kids. I mean, kids who were like into magic and magic tricks. And a lot of them had many homosexual tendencies. I don't know if that correlates to one another. But these people ended up going in very bizarre directions in their life. And they ended up getting deeper into magic and trying to become professional magicians and things like that. It all starts with stuff like this. So if you go, there's 36 results for magic, which is geared towards kids. You see this game, Pavilion Games Light Up Magic Set. Look at the G in magic, right? You see the swirl, which is spiral, excuse me, which I just covered in a video, which means the rebirth, okay? We're talking about the rebirth of the Antichrist. This is a symbol for for magic, used in magic. It's a symbol we see all the time. That is why the G has the swirl. We also know that it is used in pedophilia, and it addresses little boy lovers, which is just absolutely sick and disturbing. It makes my blood boil talking about, so I'm not going to get into that. But you see that in the G, and this brand, Magic, has a ton of games in here. Of course, you see the Magic 8-Ball. Now, a lot of people think of that as something that's extremely innocent, right? They grab it. They ask a stupid question. Hey, am I going to be a millionaire? <laughs> and they shake and it says, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Everybody has a lame time playing with the thing. Well, people don't know the origins of the magic eight ball. And it began with a clairvoyant son from an early age, Albert C. Carter, the son of a Cincinnati clairvoyant, found himself surrounded by all things mystical. His mother, Mary's popularity as a medium, Increased And remember, being a medium, being a psychic, contacting the dead, this is all forbidden in the Bible. This is forbidden. In Deuteronomy 18.10, it specifically talks about sorcerers, people who practice witchcraft, communicate with the dead, use divination. Okay, so none of this stuff should be going on. But again, let me read you the origins of the game because, again, everybody out there thinks that it's no big deal. All right, hey, it's just fun. They don't realize subliminally what they're doing and how they're indoctrinating their own children with witchcraft. So his mother, Mary, was very popular as a medium. So too did Albert's interest in her work. He got interested in his mother's work as a medium. In particular, he liked the majority of her clients 
Like the majority of her clients, he was fascinated by one of her fortune-telling inventions, the Psycho Slate. The Psycho Slate consisted of a small chalkboard that could be placed inside of a sealed container. While with a client, Mary would close the lid of the container and ask a question aloud to the other world. To her client's amazement, the room would fill with the sounds of chalk scribbling across the board. When the scratchings died down, Mary would then open the container to reveal the answer as dictated by the spirits. While no one is quite sure exactly how Mary achieved the results, it is safe to say that this inspired Albert to create his own version of the Psycho Slate, which eventually becomes the Magic 8-Ball. And to no one's surprise, a bookman... (laughs) (laughs) I laugh because this part's funny. A first-generation American born to Russian Jewish parents, of course, because, of course, these fake Jews practice Jewish mysticism, magic. That's what their books are all about. That's what the Cabal's about. That's what the Talmud's about. And he was a business-savvy man, and he came up with the logistics to make the magic eight ball, and the rest is history. And we still see this thing, which was popular in the 50s, still shoved down our throats, you know, still in stores. How many products can you really say are still in stores? Now, I know they still have some of the old board games there. I mean, I grew up playing games like uh, like Connect Four, right? Pretty simple game. You drop the thing in there, right? You block them from getting the Connect of the Four. Pretty simple. Not a lot of Satanism involved in that. Or, yeah, you get games like Tiddlywinks. I mean, come on. These are classic games. You don't even see Tiddlywinks out there anymore. But the 8 Ball's still out there. Right, the Magic 8 Ball is still available. See it on Walmart site, see it on Toys R Us. You'll see it in just about every department store. Now, going back through these games that Toys R Us is promoting, what you'll see are all these basic startup kits. That's what they are. They're startup kits geared towards toddlers. You get, um, you know, the basic card games. You get games involving money and coins and being able to hide objects and move them around. You get the rabbit in the hat. But you also see all the basic Illuminati, New World Order, black magic symbols, right? Not only do we see the the, uh, spiral, but we see in this one, we see pyramids all over the place, right? We see uh, other occultic symbols inside. We see more of the same. I mean, the the spiral is all over all of this stuff, to be honest. I'm scrolling through it right now looking as I talk. That's why going back, you see this game here. Uh, There's a game that has, you know, black and white cloth, not a surprise, the black and white esoteric Masonic colors, the duality, the balance that they believe in, promoting that towards kids. Of course, it has to be that color. You also see uh, Penn and Teller, fool everyone magic kit. Well, you're not fooling us, fat boy. I'll tell you that, Penn. You're not fooling me, you satanic filth. You see, now you see me, the magic set based on the awful, absolute, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but maybe one of the, the, uh, What's the proper word? Um, Gayest movies I've ever seen in my life. Am I allowed to say that still? Well, I'm saying it. Very lame, awful movie. Now you see me. So promoting that towards kids, of course, using the movies uh, to get them more interested, like we see with Harry Potter and all the Disney films. Then they have, you know, wands that they're selling to kids. They have more magic sets. They mix in some other stuff. I mean, it's, it's just all right here. They have their own section on Toys R Us for magic. So how people can sit there and say, you're out of your mind. They're not indoctrinating kids with magic. I mean, this is an entire department devoted to magic. Ma- Look at this magic show with some fruitcake on the cover. Showing you magic tricks. Magic table set. Become a young magician. Right? You even see... <laughs> Uh, and the spirals just all over it. And I just wanted to cover this so parents out there were aware. Because I know it's easy to go, well, okay, you can believe you know all the stuff that I'm talking about. And then go, well, I don't want to be an extremist, right? I don't want to be like, you know, have my kid tied down. I, and I understand that, right? You don't, want, you don't want to be like, hey, you can't leave the house. I'm afraid something's going to happen. Obviously, they have to be in this world. What I try to tell people is... You know, and by being in this world, I mean they have to function. They're not going to live inside of a closet or their bedroom 24 7. And what I try to tell people is you make them aware of this stuff at a young age so they stay away from it. You know, tell them what the Bible speaks of, tell them the dangers of practicing it or performing it, tell them how it's a gateway. You know, get your kids in other activities. You know, I always say sports. I know people go, well, sports are uh, contaminated. Well, playing, you know, youth basketball or youth, youth baseball is not contaminated, it's just a game. Or, you know, that they're playing, at least getting exercise, not sitting at home, you know, practicing magic and then preparing themselves to be magicians. 
You know, you see all these magic linking rings, right? So it just teaches you about the illusion of magic. They never talk about how the demons are involved in magic, like these guys like David Blaine, these disgusting human beings who are professional magicians that make millions of dollars. People don't realize they're demonically possessed, but I wanted to make parents aware that this is what's going on because, you know, you might go into Toys R Us with your kid and you might go to the video game section or maybe even down an aisle looking for a board game, but you're not going to see every single, th- you're not going to be like, oh, magic, magic, magic. You know, there's so much going on. The ch- Your kid's looking at games and you're trying to look and make sure he's okay. And you're trying to figure out what's going on and what you got to make for dinner. You know, I understand how life is. It's hard to always be aware of these things, but this is just more showing you that magic is everywhere. It's promoted. It's promoted as a good thing. And gateways are the most dangerous thing for children because these are the things that lead them to the next level. Any Satanist I've ever spoken to is not a Satanist anymore because I wouldn't talk to a Satanist, but I've spoken to people who have left Satanism, who have been reborn and found salvation through Christ. And their stories are always similar, right? They grow up in a household where, uh, you know, either the parents are, they don't teach them scripture, right? Or they, you know, are part of some type of evangelist Christian uh, group or church where they're not really preaching God's word, they're preaching par- prosperity and all that stuff. So the kids, you know, they're not policed by their parents. They don't really give them lectures on what's good and bad. Kid starts playing Dungeons and Dragons. The next thing you know, the guy's a wizard, Okay, a wizard. And I'm not talking about, you know, uh, some type of joke here calling someone a wizard as ridiculous as it sounds for a grown man to call himself a wizard and how pathetic it sounds. Literally, these people become high ranking wizards who perform these ceremonies that involve sacrifice and blood drinking and all that stuff and cannibalism. And it starts with these board games. They get into stuff like this. It starts with Disney. It starts with watching it, being fascinated by it, not being policed by their parents, not having a sound doctrine in scripture. And this is what leads them down that path. So make sure your kids just stay away from this stuff, even if it's something as simple as magic tricks. I mean, who care? Who is interested in this stuff? When I was a kid, if I saw, you know, and I try, like I said, I know some people who were like into this stuff. And then as we got older, I just shake my head how embarrassing for these kids in their 20s to be doing this stuff. But if I was, you know, in school or somewhere and I saw a kid with a table with the, you know, wearing the magic hat with the wand and cards, I would just flip the table over in his face. That's what I would do. Get that lame crap out of my school and get it away from me because we don't need this stuff promoted. This is satanic garbage. So be aware that this is the stuff they're selling in stores and promoting. It's all gateway to controlling our kids and getting them indoctrinated with witchcraft and magic. And it's disgraceful and disgusting. I thank you all for listening to today's show. God bless all of you and your families.